thanks for staying with us. Over now to infrastructure. As part of measures to extend development across Lagos and grow the economy of the state through a robust infrastructure portfolio, the state government has commissioned a multi-purpose car park and building at Onikon. Governor Babajide Songwulu stated that the edifice will not only handle all traffic issues but also ensure an ambience needed in the area. Lovi Kukuyadakon was there. Reconstruction began in June 2013 during the tenure of now Minister of Works and Housing, Babadudi Fashula, then Governor of Lagos State. It is now completed and commissioned by Governor Babajide Sawonlu, an affirmation and attestation to his resolve to ensure completion of all inherited projects that fit into his theme's agenda. Governor Sawonlu is convinced that with the commissioning of the multipurpose Unicorn Car Park and Facility Building, traffic gridlock would become history in that area. This multi-level car park will speak to all of the traffic issues and all of the social integration that needs to happen around there. And so that you can see that this is well conceived, is well thought out, and it will help and reduce all of the gridlocks that usually happen around this place. This edifice that has over 384 parking lots, that has seating capacity, for over 1,400, will ensure that not only is free flow of traffic, but will also ensure that there can be ambience, you know, that is needed in this entire neighborhood. Special advisor to Somulu on Works and Infrastructure, Engineer Aramidi Adeyoyi, said the edifice would extend development across Lagos and grow the economy of the state. In a city such as Lagos, scarcity of land is an issue, hence a multi-story car park which utilizes vertical space provides an ideal solution to overcome horizontal space constraints and regulate better traffic flow. In deciding to do this, we also realize that this facility building is significantly important because of its large size parking capacity, income generation potential, and its location strategically within the heart of Unicom. Its judicious use will no doubt help absorb vehicles that would have otherwise parked on the roadside and other illegal parking spaces along the corridor. She also highlighted the scope of works for the project. Five levels of parking floors with a capacity of 384 vehicles with offices for tickets and restrooms on each floor. The sixth floor is designated as multi-purpose mixed use consisting of a clubhouse of about 410 square meters capacity. This provides additional recreation facility for this area that has both Island Club and the River Tennis Club at close proximity. Engineer Adeoye strongly believes another avenue for job opportunities has just been created with the commissioning of the facility providing an aesthetically pleasing environment and more importantly, complementing the state's efforts around tourism infrastructure within the precinct of Oniko. From Lagos, Lab Ikuku Oyedoku, for Plus TV, Africa. Moving on to the issues of voter apathy. Nigeria youths have been urged to register and get their permanent voter cards, PVCs, in order to participate in political affairs in the country and get the desired leadership. The score was made by some artists in the entertainment industry at an Ignite Conference 2021 to educate and curate awareness against voter apathy. Many young people have been involved in movements for change. They are taken to the streets and using online social networks and communities to connect. But that's not enough without their PVCs and involvement in politics to drive the actual change. To this end, at this conference involving Nigerian creatives, entertainers and influencers, charted ways to keep the conversations going in reshaping the polity. A renowned Nigerian entrepreneur at Ted Peter's side advised the youth clamoring for change that without their PVCs and voting, it is just a mere wish. When young people disconnect, they disconnect from everything. They surrender their birthright. And so people who should be in the departure lounge decide, want to decide everything, including the plans for the future and all that. And so it's the same young people who tell you, some who were asked to come, say, no, 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 I have no interest in all these plans. No problem. Well, guess what? That old thief will go in and smuggle projects for himself using your own resources if you're not careful. I don't want to live anywhere else. I've lived there. It's not great. It's it's good for them, but hey, it's cold and it's just not home. The food, the music, I mean, it's just not home. So I think it's, it's up to us, a few of us, to build this country, 
so that the rest can come and join us. Increasingly in Nigeria, the space of citizens' voices and, in, and their interface with the government is threatened. All of us are politicians without joining a political party. And I think it's important that we all understand our role in politics and governance. The believe that voter turnout is declining in Nigeria, especially among the youths. Other challenges were highlighted. Whether you are for separatism or you are for a new constitution or you are for restructuring or for anything, the most important thing you have to do is to ensure that your enemy does not go and represent you. When I went out to vote for the recent local government elections, I believe maybe there were three ballot papers. Three. But when is presidential election? Oh, things are happening. Come on. Let us not be distracted. The role of creative industry cannot be overemphasized in getting the young ones to focus on setting their priorities right. The thing with intellectuals is we, we talk a lot and we do not make effort. And the, then we end up allowing the riffraffs to get into power and make policies that we have to follow. Like we're talking about changing Nigeria. Hey, step one is young people go and get your, your, your accreditation so you can vote. The thrust here is that there is need for young people to do enough in registering, collecting their PVCs and coming out in mass during elections. Well, the take home there is that politics is everyone's business as regards to who becomes the leader in a country. And so, first thing first, register, get your PVCs ready and participate in order to get the desired change. And capacity building, the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, has organized a workshop for employers to exchange ideas on operations and enable an efficient working environment for core members. Plus TV Africa's and Gozika Ohaijese monitored the employers' workshop in Lagos. The 2021 edition is themed optimizing the NYSC Core Employers Partnership for National Development in the context of new normal. The Lagos State NYSC coordinator, Edwin Megwa, who was represented by Esther Otoyo, drew the attention of the participants to some shortcomings on the part of core employers which need to be tackled. Number one, delay in applying or not applying at all for the services of core members and expecting them to be posted. Two, increasing rejection of core members. Three, aiding core members to stage manage their own rejection. Four, underutilization of core members. Five, delay in issuance of monthly clearance to deserving core members. Some employers share the challenges they encounter with core members and spoke on their expectations. The challenges we have is that usually they send someone from, imagine sending someone that studied business admin or sending someone that studied economics. And our system is actually digital too. We just do most of digital marketing, not like the physical sales where they need to. So we really usually don't have where to fix these core members too. So we actually have challenges of, oh, we don't want to reject, but if we accept you, we don't want you to be redundant. They expect them when they get there, like to meet up with their KPIs. Core members at the workshop explained why their colleagues want some employers to reject their deployment to place of primary assignments. Why some core members like necess necessitate their um, rejection? Maybe the company does not have an accommodation due to distance, like from where they stay to the company. Some of them, they feel like the company won't pay enough. Yeah, because if the company is paying them like enough money, I don't think anybody will look at distance. I mean, their transportation will be covered and all of that stuff. It is hoped that critical actions will be taken concerning all the issues raised at this forum. One of the highlights of the event was an award of recognition to the best employer of the year. For Plus TV Africa, Ngozika Ohaijesi. Still on capacity building, the Nigerian Navy has retreated its commitment to combat piracy and other maritime crimes as they collaborate with 
Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center in conjunction with Denmark government to organize a five-day uh, training to key law enforcement agencies. The Navy says such partnership has been yielding good results as seen in the significant drop in piracy and incidents of maritime crime in Nigeria and the Gulf of Guinea. Destiny Momo has more. This training, which centers around developing maritime security culture in the Gulf of Guinea, brings a holistic approach in the management of Nigeria's maritime environment and requires a coordinated effort among the security agencies operating within the domain. Flag Officer Commanding Western Naval Command, represented by Rear Admiral Habila Zakaria, said most maritime crimes call for cooperatively framed responses. He therefore commended the Denmark government and the training center. It is in the light of this that I'm excited about the potentials of this capacity building effort to draw attention to the seemingly innocuous but crucial role of cultural considerations to maritime security governance. The commander of the training center, Major General Francis Ofori, also spoke of the Gulf of Guinea being at a critical juncture in its socio-economic and political development of Africa, hence the training. Over the last decade, the region has faced a number of maritime security threats, which include maritime piracy, armed robbery, and transnational organized crime. You've heard a number of them. The ECOWAS and ECAS, in a bid to stem the tide of these threats, join up under the Yaoundé architecture in efforts to coordinate their response to the insecurity of the Gulf of Guinea. Danish Ambassador to Ghana, Tom Noring, spoke on the importance of the Gulf of Guinea to his country and the need for criminal elements to be rid of of the region. The previous courses held in other African countries which trained 164 maritime security actors at both regional and national levels. Recently, the federal government launched the Deep Blue Project as the first integrated maritime security strategy in West and Central Africa with the aim of tackling the incidences of piracy, sea robbery and other crime. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. And that's all on this edition of Plus Report. Please follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And just subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Ubiuko. Thanks for watching.